Good morning also uh, from, from my end, from my side. Um, I'm here on behalf of uh, our cross-country team and uh, uh, Pierre Mignoret, the race director. Um, Lasse showed you already uh, a picture of Nordic combined team, so I think I had to show you the cross-country team. Um, similarly to Nordic combined, there aren't any changes in the FIS staff uh, for cross-country. Um, so still uh, one more year uh, for all four of us. Um, in the short presentation, I want to give you an update about the most important uh, rules changes we have for the upcoming winter. Um, and then maybe a short outlook to the future, to the calendar uh, for next winter and uh, for the seasons to come. Um, so there are not that many changes in our World Cup rules. Um, before the last uh, winter, we modified the quota system uh, of uh, how many participating athletes per nation can uh, compete in uh, both individual World Cups and tour events like uh, Ruka Triple or World Cup Final or Tour de Ski. So there are no changes in that except for uh, stage events. Uh, you see uh, the red text and that's um, that um, 20 best of the current Sprint World Cup standing have the right or can start in uh, the stage events. The reason for that was if, for example, a team had a smaller quota, uh, so of course they, they picked uh, the team or the athletes who would be competitive in a stage event like Tour de Ski. But uh, in the Tour we also have uh, sprint events, in the Tour uh, sometimes more than one. So that's why some of the sprinters couldn't take part. So that was one of the reasons why uh, the quotas have been modified, so now the 20 best can start within the quota, having still the maximum number of athletes the same. Uh, maybe a little bit the bigger change um, for the upcoming season, should it be approved by the F FIS Council still, but it was approved by the cross-country committee, um, is to increase uh, uh, the prize money split from top 10 to top 20, with having the same amount of the overall prize money. So the total prize money haven't, hasn't increased, but the number of athletes who will be paid got increased. Uh, this proposal came uh, from the athletes themselves. Um, they ran a survey during the summer. Um, I think more than 100 athletes took part or answered uh, in the survey. And uh, you can see the vast majority uh, was in favor of uh, this proposal. Uh, the exact split, how much uh, which uh, placement gets, uh, I don't have them here, but uh, uh, it's uh, already in the updated World Cup rules on our website. Um, another change is uh, a modification is in uh, bonus seconds award at the, the Fist to the Ski. We know that during the stage events we, we give bonus seconds. Um, so the change concerns the sprint uh, in the Tour de Ski. Still the maximum um, is 60 seconds for the first place uh, in, uh, in the sprint. However, the split between other positions has been modified. The reason to do that was to kind of um, Avoid the effort uh, to athletes who run the whole day from the qualification to the quarterfinals to the semis to the final. So you can see that there is a bigger difference between sixth and seventh place and twelfth to thirteenth place. So it means if you're number six in uh, in the sprint, it means you had to compete the whole day. Um, so that means you should get more bonus seconds comparing to those who maybe didn't make it through the uh, uh, semi-finals. Um, so that's it for the World Cup rules for the uh, upcoming winter. Um, last year, uh, it was a big discussion, uh, especially in the fall, uh, when we introduced the limitation on the, on the pole length in uh, classical technique competitions. I think you, are, you all are familiar with uh, uh, the challenges we have been facing in terms of uh, double polling and classic technique and evolution of, of, of classic technique. 
So limitation of the pole length uh, was one of the measures which we took to kind of uh, protect uh, classic technique because we believe um, that um, two techniques, free and, and uh, classic, are part of cross-country skiing's DNA and uh, we want to preserve it. So after one year of experience uh, on the top level, this side, sorry, okay. After one year of experience, uh, we can say it has worked very well. Especially on the World Cup level, we haven't had uh, no infractions. The rules or the pole length was checked both uh, before uh, the competition and after. There were maybe a couple of, of, uh, of issues, but the athletes maybe just took wrong pair of poles. So they took the correct ones and um, at the end, I think, um, it worked very fine and it has been confirmed also for the upcoming winter. Another step how to protect uh, classic technique has been the implementation of uh, technique zones. I don't know if I should uh, explain what it is. Um, the jury now has a possibility to set uh, specific areas on the course where certain technique is prohibited. In this case, double polling. So, um, in an uphill section, only striding is allowed. Uh, I'll show you a video if it works. No. Okay. Just give us a second. You watch for the last uh, skier here in a uh, dark suit. Here where the red bar is, uh, you see the start of the uh, technique zone. You see the girl started striding normally. That's where we al almost everybody was double polling. That was the, uh, the, the example from Dramen. So uh, before the season, it was... Uh, in the rules that it shouldn't be used in the on, on the World Cup level, technique zones now that's been approved and can be used when 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 the jury decides also on the World Cup level. Um, World Cup calendars for uh, next two years for 1718. Uh, you can see the summary: 14 World Cup size, 29 competitions. Uh, we have two mini tours. Uh, in Ruka, the opening tour and the World Cup final in Sweden. We also have already the 12th edition of the Tour de Ski. Uh, in uh, Zurich, two weeks ago, um, there was a small change to the calendar. Uh, we swapped the techniques in Toblach before Christmas. So the interval start on Saturday will be in free technique and on Sunday the pursuit in classic. The reason why is that um, the interval start free technique competitions are important for uh, qualification for the Olympic Games. So we wanted to give the, the opportunity to teams to have uh, the, the qualification possible. We also have two new venues next winter. Um, is Dresden uh, in uh, Germany, where we, uh, where we will have a sprint and team sprint just after the Tour de Ski. And we will have uh, Seefeld as the World Championship organizer in um, uh, 19, so uh, a test for them, for cross country at least. <laughs> um, one of the changes you might have noticed is that uh, we try to um, kind of uh, work on our competition formats. I'll come to that a little bit later. But what's uh, important for the, the upcoming calendar is that no longer we will find in the calendar distances like five, 10 kilometers or 12 or some, something in between. So as a principle, the distance competitions should be always 10K and 15. Of course, we will have exceptions or we'll ha we have competition formats like um, uh, skiathlon or, or, or mass start on in, in, in Oslo on Holmenkollen where we have 50K and 30K. But uh, individual start or interval start competitions <coughs> will be 10K ladies and 15K men. Um, also, um, and it's, we are not happy about that, but we have no relay 
um, next winter. Unfortunately, it was not a wish. Uh, however, it was a consequence of several things of uh, an organizer who had to give back the, uh, the World Cup and um, it was not possible to find a venue uh, where we could have the relay. So something for sure we are not happy with uh, and something we want to avoid in the future. For the season after, 1819, only uh, a few highlights. You can find the updated calendar on our website. Um, the start of the season will be one week earlier, which means we will finish one, one week early as well before Christmas. So not on the 23rd, but uh, uh, the weekend before. Um, Lakhti uh, World Cup has been moved uh, to February two weeks before the World Championships uh, with uh, a sprint weekend. And uh, we will end our World Cup with uh, the World Cup final in Quebec City in, in, uh, in Canada. Um, I think uh, all of us were really happy with uh, the World Cup final we had last winter with a uh, great audience, great organization, uh, great promotion of the sport in Canada. So we are coming back in uh, 19 for the World Cup final again. Um, one of the things I already said about uh, competition formats. Uh, for some time now in, in cross country community, we have been discussing and, and working and thinking and brainstorming about uh, the future of, of cross country skiing as a sport. Uh, one part of the discussion is uh, future of, of uh, competition formats which we have. Um, it was a heavily discussed on your even a main topic of the cross country executive board in, in Zurich. Um, our goal is not to make a revolution to say everything is wrong and we build everything new. But uh, we feel that we need to streamline um, our race formats. Why? Um, one of the reasons might be we asked our fans and of course they are hardcore fans because they answered our survey. So we couldn't really reach the general public who know nothing about skiing, but uh, at least we were able to reach maybe more than uh, 4,000 people. And we asked them what are the key elements they want to see either on the course or on TV or as a spectator or as a skier. And the most important things are lead changes, race drama, tactics. And I think <coughs> it felt like it's perfectly aligned with uh, our opinion, what, what uh, our race formats should offer to, to our audience, fans, and, and stakeholders. So <coughs> that's why we, during the summer, uh, in, a, in a working group of uh, FIS staff and FIS marketing AG and, and, and uh, other stakeholders, we, <coughs> we took a look at our formats and uh, started to think what uh, we could do. We are not in the uh, situation when we could uh, present uh, a concrete uh, and, and fixed proposal. It still, during the whole winter, will be discussed and uh, thought about, and uh, we should come to a conclusion for the cross-country meetings and uh, for the FIS Congress next spring. But um, here are some uh, key elements which has been and <coughs> will be taken into consideration. Um, the, the world of sport is constantly changing. Uh, Cross-country skiing is not the only sport uh, which is facing um, some challenges and uh, which uh, has to change. But um, our aim is to combine our strong traditions, which we have, and actual trends. I don't know how easy or difficult it will be, but uh, we do not want to forget our traditions for uh, something modern and trendy. And uh, we want our fans to be engaged with our sport. We think and we believe that our competitions and formats which we have should be easy to understand, even for people who are not really hardcore or skiers themselves, but when you switch on the TV, you should be able to understand what's going on. Of course, the perception of, of, of what's understandable uh, is different in Middle Europe and Scandinavia. Um, but nevertheless, uh, 
we try to simplify our formats. Um, as much as possible, uh, we try to have a standardized duration of our competitions. It's Im especially important for television. When every season we are facing some challenges to, to find a, a TV slot uh, when we are on air. And it helps when uh, TV broadcasters wha know when the competition starts and ends. And it's not different every weekend and competition format to competition format. We want to be future ready as much as possible. What does it mean? It means that there are several trends in our sport. I already spoke a little bit about uh, classic skiing. We don't know where the evolution of, of uh, classic technique goes, how, f how, how long we will have uh, both techniques. So far we are determined to have classic technique, but uh, we will see what the future holds and we have to be ready when uh, some changes happen. There are some new formats, new things which have become really popular like mixed events, uh, especially popular on the, on the Olympic level. So this is something re we, we need to look into as well. And last but not least, uh, we believe that uh, the, the competitions, the formats which we have on the top level, on the highest level, <coughs> the World Championships, Olympic Games, uh, have to be the base of our World Cup program and have to be connected with youth and kids. Because it's important for us uh, and it's one of our key values that we are a sport which a lot of people do actively outside every day when we have good snow conditions and um, kids copy and youth copy their idols. So what they want to see or what they want um, to practice uh, uh, in a workout should be something they see on TV. So, as I said, um, a lot of discussions are ahead of us. We are open and we are happy to receive positive feedbacks, negative feedbacks, all feedbacks uh, are welcome. And uh, we want to come to a conclusion and decision uh, at the next FIS Congress in May. Uh, now, last two slides, I'll switch a little bit the topic uh, to media update from cross country. Uh, not so many new things except that uh, this season we will not have any season media accreditation for written press and, and online media. It's a little bit of a step backwards because we've had it for a few years. But at the end, uh, when we analyze the situation, uh, it seemed like it created maybe more uh, issues for media chiefs and, and people who need to deal with uh, uh, all the organization because there were a couple of lists going around and. Nobody really knew who is coming and who is not, so we will be kindly asked to fill out the accreditation <coughs> forms for every World Cup venue you will go to. To make uh, you this a little bit easier, uh, in the next days I will send uh, a media guide uh, with all the necessary information from every World Cup venue, including all the accreditation links and deadlines, so we'll just click on the link and fill out um, uh, the form where you want to go. Um, as last year, uh, there is some official FIS communication channels. If you are not receiving some of them or would like to be receiving some of them, just let me know. Uh, media alerts, uh, usual thing after the race, uh, uh, official communications by email. WhatsApp, um, that's a um, service we've been using uh, since last year and that's to give information uh, from uh, the competition on a quick basis when uh, especially in a sprint when something happens, somebody is ranked as last or DQ'd or something like that, then uh, WhatsApp messaging is the, the fastest way. And of course, social media, Twitter, especially for, for news. Um, as maybe three years now, we have been uh, uh, working on behind the scenes videos where we want to present cross country skiing from different perspective. Um, so next winter we will have 17 clips from different World Cup sites with uh, different topics plus 10 Olympic theme videos where we want to interview athletes <coughs> or future stars or uh, medal hopes um, and ask them questions about the games. All the videos will be uh, on YouTube and uh, free to share. Last thing is uh, an outlook about the Junior uh, World Championships. Uh, we seem to be 
very well uh, on track for the next three, four years. And uh, I think we are very happy about that. It hasn't been the case in the past. <coughs> so for 18, we are in Kandersteg and Goms in Switzerland. Um, you can see the dates. They have uh, online, uh, they have put online their website, social media. Uh, so you can find all the information there as well. Uh, for 19, uh, Wuokate is the candidate uh, to be confirmed uh, or approved in in uh, uh, November. And Oberwiesenthal in Germany for 2020 has been confirmed already. We are still working on the dates uh, of, the, of the junior votes. For 20, yeah, that's uh, for the next three years. 2021 is Poland, with uh, they show their interest and still they will come back with the feedback in spring if their interest is still there and if uh, or where uh, they want to host uh, the, the World Championships. So next three, four years look very good also for the juniors. That's everything from uh, the world of cross-country skiing. Unless you have some questions, I'll be ready or I'll try to answer. Thank you.